it's Star Wars Day. So we're going to paint ta -da, some R2-D2 because it's totally fun. Um, for wine and watercolors with Wendy, we are pairing this with an Ava Grace Chardonnay. Um, you don't have to drink what I'm drinking. That's just <clears throat> what I'm pairing it with. I apologize for the dogs in the background. There might be lots of noise. Who knows? Um, there are some fun things. So that's why I didn't do the outline all the way down. I will put this lovely little drawing that I've done on my Facebook page in the outlines album if you want to make your own R2-D2. I'm going to try to remember what colors are what. And we're just going to have fun and let a lot of things drip and look kind of fun. Maybe. So we're using Dr. P.H. Martins in black. I have True Blue. I'm using Crimson, which is about as red as I've got. Um, so his red things might be a little pink. Um, and then I have my trusty premium watercolors, uh, Payne's Gray, that I think the brand is Master's Touches. Uh, Master's Touch. I don't know. It's a tube. It's the only Payne's Gray I found. I really like it, so I use it all the time. So for R2, we're actually going to start with like the white areas and get him nice and blocked in all your shading on the white part of him. And then we can do some of the darker stuff and then we can kind of do some spatters and some drips and basically see what happens. I'm not sure how this is going to work. So Jenna, you need a paper towel, you need water, you need to remember that your water is here, your wine is here. Um, don't do them both. Okay, so let's get started. So we're going to get the, um, oh, I'm using a big brush and a little brush, but make sure they're watercolor brushes. Uh, that does make a huge difference. Um, and then I also have a, um, I have a marker so I can sign my name later. Um, it's not the Tombow, which might be why I haven't been liking this one. Um, you can also use a Tombow uh, brush pen that will make you really happy. So I'm going to water down my paint spray a little bit. And if you hear gunshots in the background, my husband's playing Grand Theft Auto. No one's actually breaking in and shooting us. I'm not violating that many laws. Okay, so you have your outline. Um, get it done any way you can. <clears throat> Graphite transfer paper, you can use a window. Um, you just tape your uh, outline in the window and then your paper over top of it and then you can trace over or you can use a light box or you can freehand. Um, I tend to freehand on scrap paper and then transfer to watercolor paper. Was, that's just what I do. So as we all know, um, R2 has lots and lots of white spots because um, he is a white droid. However, if we make them all white, we won't see um, a lot of it. So we're going to kind of darken the sides um, and kind of swoopy across the center. We're not gonna worry about any of these colored spots because we can paint over them in a little bit. Um, and none of this is really gonna cause that much of an issue. So we're gonna just go to the edges. If you get into some of the colored spots, it's gonna be fine. It might just add some uh, shading there too. So that's on and now, I'm going to just start pulling that. I'm going to turn it sideways because I paint sideways all the time. I'm going to start pulling that out. Like, R2 is going to look like he's been uh, just finished a battle and he's kind of dirty. Is kind of the look I'm going for. So water and just pull. And we're just going to pull it to halfway for the most part is then we'll do the other side too. Okay, and then we have white spots here and all through here, so we wanna get a little bit more. Um, I went out of the lines. I'll spatter it later. So I'm gonna bring that there. This section's blue, but it doesn't matter. So we'll just bring that down. Okay. And mainly I wanna do that so I have more to pull from when I'm pulling across all this stuff. And you could probably use a watercolor pencil when you did the outline and just pull from that, but um, I didn't. So there you go. <laughs> so down here, um, he's also white. 
And then this part's gonna be a little bit darker, so we're just gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna just start it here, take it down, but then I'm not caring. Um, if I do like swoops, it's okay, because he's not gonna be completely finished. He's gonna be kind of a stylized, a stylized R2-D2, which is what makes this kind of fun. And we want him to look a little dirty. We don't want these rough edges. Um, we want R2 to look silly. <laughs> And uh, please excuse my nails. I was, I got a nail stamper kit and I'm really bad at it. So it's something I have to keep practicing so I can get better at stamping my own nails. So we'll probably put some more drips in um, with a lighter color. I'm gonna keep bringing this down a little just uh, in case the drips go further than I think they are, just to add some. And since he's round, I'm taking my strokes up his body instead of up and instead of this way, going up and down to um, to make it look like he's round. Uh, I know that sounds a little weird, but that is why I'm doing it. All right, now I'm gonna turn around so I can see what that looks like. This is why I paint sideways. I can't always tell what it looks like. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Um, I can add all the lines a little here. It's really okay. Kind of adds to the fun. Wouldn't stress. So I'm not going up here too far because I'll have a lot of the stuff to paint through and pull from. So you need to work quickly so you don't get a harsh line. And you can leave the center pretty much undone if you want. If we have to, we'll add some uh, bleed proof white. If I need to add some highlights. There we go. Just, I want to make sure there's some color all the way through him. Curve that up a little bit. It's not looking round. And you can always come back and darken this up. Um, but you can't, it's really hard to make it lighter. So I caution you to be frugal. Um, so I waited too long and that line got harsh. This is what happens when you chop and paint. And when you paint sideways, the cabinet gets a little weird. Okay, so I'm going to turn it this way. Oh, that looks fun. Um, so this is getting a little harsh right here, so I'm just kind of blending it out. So you blend it out just by getting some water and going back and forth. Um, the top is just there. Um, there's some edges that need to be kind of cleaned up. So I'm just gonna maybe come outside of my lines a little bit and that's okay. Uh, remember, if you do use graphite transfer paper, I should have told you earlier, um, to use really light pressure is if you don't like lines, you're gonna get really upset. Okay, so there's the first step of R2. He's just kind of basically done. So um, if you've, obviously, if you're watching this, you are into Star Wars, or maybe you're just like me. Um, these are blue, um, but they get a little dark on the sides. Uh, this box around is blue, the top is blue. These are going to be black. These are going to be black. These are going to be black, but I'm going to leave little streaks in them to look like wires. Um, this is black. It's going to have a red dot. Uh, this stripe here is blue. We've got black accents. We've got some gray accents here. Um, I don't know what color I'm going to make that. It's going to really depend on um, how I feel it's looking when I get to that point. So what I think we're going to do, um, I keep saying um, now I'm annoying myself, is I'm going to stick with the Payne's Gray for a few minutes. This should be dry right here. So these are just darker gray aspects of him. Um, so this one I'm going to just fill in here and the top of it and then down. 
again, we're not worrying about where the lines end. We want him to look a little freeform. And then we're just going to blend that. So he looks darker right there. Okay. And then this other box is basically the same. It's dark on the edges and light in the center. And I painted out of the lines. Oh, well. So this one actually closes, at least in my mind. Again, it's not really an R2-D2. It's, it's a kind of an idea of what an R2 would look like in my crazy head. Okay, these sections are darker too, so we'll go ahead and darken up this section. I don't want it super dark because I want the black pieces to really pop, but I want it to be darker than the rest of it. And I'm painting into the black and I don't care. It's no big deal. I'm using my bigger brush and I'm just kind of working quickly to get it all done more than making sure that there's no errors because it's painting and just have fun. Can use a little bit more down here. There we go. Right. Um, and we can always come back and blend it out a little bit more if we want to. Uh, it's your painting, so when you get to that point, you might make a decision. We left this part pretty light, and I like that. These are going to be white, and then this is going to be dark. I don't know whether I'm going to make it blue or if I'm going to make it gray or black. So let's start uh, with these blue sections up here at the top. So once again, I'm going to flip my painting over because for me, it's easier to paint upside down. I don't know why I'm that way, uh, but you don't have to. Make sure you shake your paints. Uh, they have, they do tend to settle on the bottom. This one has a funky dropper, so it gets a little screwy on me. So this is the True Blue, um, Dr. P.S. Martins. I'm actually going to pull it out. Oh, that's nice and dark. I really like that. That's really, really pretty. It's a really pretty color. So we're just going to use the paint itself to do a lot of the shading. So let's do his. Okay, I didn't say what I was doing. Let's paint the top of his head. I realized I didn't tell you what I was doing. Um, I'm going to turn him around because I'm going to put my hand in that if I don't. Now, on these panels, I want them darker on the sides and lighter in the middle. So I'm going to darken that up on the side like that. I'm going to rinse my brush. And I'm going to blend that out. You see how it just lightens up for you a little bit, and it's perfect the way that it does that. I like how I just say things are perfect. <laughs> so with this one, I want them to be dark on top. And then I want him to blend out. And lighten up. And I think I want to put my first strip here, so I'm going to put a little bit more color up at the top. And there's a lot of water. I know I put a lot of water on here. I did it on purpose. That's blooming, but that's okay. Pick up your paper and tip it. And sometimes you kind of tap it. Um, I'm not getting any drips, so I'm just going to help it. So there, 
drippy drips a little. And we might just drop, like straight up, dropperfuls of paint when we're done to get some really nice big drip effects. Uh, again, don't know what I'm doing yet. <laughs> just, when you paint with me, I make things up as I go along. Okay, so the next one we're doing dark. And then I'm lightening it as I go down. I'm gonna get a little bit more of that water off. Keep this one a little darker. Okay, and then this last one over here, I want it dark like the first one that I did. So you want to do that and then your edge. And there's so much paint in this, it's kind of funny. I'm rinsing the brush, dabbing on my paper towel, pulling, rinsing the brush, dabbing on my paper towel, pulling over to lighten that up some. Okay. Then he looks like he's spilled a little bit more. There we go. <laughs> R2's just having a day. We're just gonna let him go. All right, so you know R2, he's got this blue section here and a blue section here. I'm gonna work on this one first. And I want this one, and I know it doesn't look that way, but I actually want it to be lighter than the top section. So that's all the paint I'm probably gonna use, and then I'm going to just keep using water to move this around. Remember you want darker on the sides. And you want to pull that color. There we go. And lighten it up. And I rinse my brush again to get it lighter. So he's really light right here in the center. Then I'll dab a little bit more over on that other side. When I say a little bit, I actually not, yeah. Just a little bit, because I went overboard over here. So I'm gonna lighten it up. Okay, so we really wanna wait for that section to dry before I do uh, the red, because the red is going to really, really pop. And we don't want uh, it to turn purple when it moves into that section. If you can keep your hand out of it, we'll see if I can, you can do the blue around the black button. Then we're gonna do the same thing. My uh, approach to shading is dark, pull it out, see what happens. That's a highlight, so I do want to kind of keep the paint out of that. Normally I wouldn't care, but it is a highlight for that button. So we're kind of done with the blue for now until we add some more drips. I'm gonna drip him up a little bit. Um, we're gonna move on to the black. Or not, I'm thinking. I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the black, but I may go straight to red. I may change my mind, I do that. So yeah, this is the Dr. P.H. Martin's black. A little goes a long way with the black. I put a little swatch of kind of shadow here and I'm just not even gonna worry about the line on that one. Just want it there. I wanna fill in that dark. 
right there. And I'm feeling that we haven't done anything crazy for a little bit. So let's get some black on our paintbrush and some water. And you're going to take your paintbrush. Try to aim it over where you're going. I hope this works. I don't know yet. Um, and we're just going to hit some spatters right here. Like, we just needed to spatter. Um, yeah, I just made that go out. I don't care. I'm going to actually just bring it out some. Bring it out like this, and then turn it into a drip that just runs down the side of it. So if you're not getting the drips you want, just add water and tilt. It'll start dripping eventually. And dripping has no control, so it just kind of goes wherever it wants, which is the fun part of doing a drip. So we're gonna do a little bit more drip right here. I'm gonna try to like try to pull it down into here. And when it doesn't drip, just get more water. I hope you can see this. And I'm putting more paint on. I might have to come back through and darken this a little. All right, we got a drip coming. There we go. It's dripping now. It's making a mess on my table. <laughs> well, my secret thing, my husband loves me. <laughs> so we're gonna let that one drip. That looks good. Like I said, it's gonna look like Archie's been in a bow. So he's gonna kind of have drips and craziness, and it's all good. You don't have to do it if you. Hate the idea of drips, don't do them. Um, I like them, so I'm going. Okay, so then we have a box over here. I've got way too much paint on it. Okay, I'm not doing the one right next to it because I need to leave a little bit of a line, and that first box was so full of paint. It just wasn't going to do anything. Okay, this one is black. dry right there so I can go ahead and do this. Actually, I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. I think I think it's time we start doing a little bit of detail work. All watercolor brushes should come to a tip uh, when you're using them, regardless of how big they are. So you don't have to go to a smaller one. I, I just, the smaller ones pick up less paint and hold less water. So they make less of a mess when you paint like me. Okay. I'm gonna leave this, uh, that's this little like eye piece that comes out uh, so the front is actually white, and we're just going to darken here so you can see that it comes out. And I'm going to leave that alone for a minute. So this part's kind of like a grid, so I'm just going to give it a grid look with some lines and cross hatching. I know that doesn't look very gritty, but it's there. And then this one I'm going to do side diagonal. I think I'm going to go ahead and outline those. Get a little more paint. Okay. 
And if you were smart, you would work from uh, left to right so you don't have a chance of sticking your hand in it. Obviously, I have not, so that's not how I did it. Okay. All right. So here's his button. I'm leaving that whole section white because I want it to kind of reflect that the button sticks out. If he's darker at the bottom, that would be kind of cool. He also has two little white reflections. So that looks pretty cool. That looks like a pretty cool button. We're going to do the same thing on this part that sticks out. We're just going to give a fine outline there. And flip this piece around. I'm going to shade that all the way to it. I don't know why. It's because I want to. And I'm going to rinse my brush, and I'm going to actually start blending a little bit around him. So that he's really light right here. So that's that little, like, ocular thing that he has that sticks out, and then sometimes he pops out something and he zaps people with it because they're being obnoxious. That's why I love her, too. You can't understand what he's saying, but you sure can tell when he's angry. Okay, we've got a little bit more black, and then we're going to do some fun spats. And we're literally just going to spat on the paper. And we're going to find out if it was a bad idea or a good idea after we're done. <laughs> so this section is just a black section. And if you don't have black, but you have all the other colors, like red, blue, yellow, you can make a black. I just didn't want to. <laughs> and there goes my daughter again. So we have all these little black sections. We already darkened him up, so he looks pretty good right there. Okay, one more. And if it's not dark enough, you can always come back. There's a couple things. You don't want to overwork a section. So then it will just look like you've been messing with it a lot. Or wear down your paper. I don't think you want to do that. So. All right. So there's R2 for the most part. I'm going to go ahead and make this section blue because I want it to smatter down. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. If you want to make it black, make it black. But I like the idea of blue spatters coming down. So again, taking it dark at the top. This section looked like little grates to me. So that's kind of what I did. I'm going to leave them white. So I probably can't spatter yet because otherwise it's going to go right over those and I'll have to fix it. Which I might do anyway. I don't know. The heavy footprints, footsteps you keep hearing walking back and forth is my son. He's decided it's time to pace. I don't really know. <clears throat> so I'm 
clapping, putting water down, and then I'm just letting it drip. You can put a paper towel down if you don't want it to drip on your thing. Now I'm getting more paint. I want it to come drip over this way too, so I'm putting, starting a little stream, so maybe it'll drip over there, and quit just going down the one. There he goes. They don't have to go off the paper. But I want to make sure you don't get it all over your table. But it is watercolor, so it is it will wash out, which is a fabulous little bonus. Um, so if you see, you don't see the grate around him, so we need to darken that up. And instead of using the paint gray, I'm actually going to use the black. I don't always like to outline, but we're just playing with this guy, and it is, well, it is what it is. <laughs> so we're bringing this black close. We're going to put more in it, and then we're going to drip some water on it. And we're going to let that, we're going to turn the page and tap and just let that run down into it. And it's totally on click K if it runs into the blue. It's kind of fun if it does. There we go. I feel like his stream in made R2 look a little strange, so I'm actually going to just mess up that edge a little because he looks like he's had like a weird tummy tuck or something, and I'm not caring for that, so I'm just putting some more down up in here. And I want some drips in this section, so I'm going to go ahead and take, and this is just a straight black. And I'm putting it on the sides like we did. And the top, because we shaded all that. And we're going to see how this drips. Then you use the water. I know it seems weird, but the more water, the better in this section. Do -do -do -do. So now we're going to drip him. And then I'm going to try to stop because I don't want that to go all the way to the bottom because I want some variation here. And they've been going all the way to the bottom and it's starting to not look fun. So we're going to try to make it a little bit more fun. Okay. So he needs some red. I think he does. You probably think he does. Let's, let's get some of this crimson on this painting. Let's see what happens. It's a nice blood red crimson. That's always good. Now I'm going to just take this. If you water down the red, obviously it will become, a, sadly, it will become pink. And we don't want pink. So there it is. We're going to, we're giving this down here a second because I don't want it to run, but I'm going to, let me go ahead and see if we can get this red to bleed, bleed down. Yeah, it looks like his eyeball's bleeding. <laughs> and I don't know why, that is super amusing to me. I'm so sorry if you find me a little twisted. Um. And it ran right through there. That looks fun. So we're going to leave it. Not that there was anything I could do to fix it, but I. Uh, <laughs> oh, well. All right. So I want him to bleed a little from here. I don't know how it's going to run down. 
I just want them there to be drips. And you do the tap tap. And sometimes you help them out a little. Okay, so we have the one blood red eye thing that's just bleeding all over. We're gonna darken that up again just to give it more, more red. Um, and now I'm gonna spatter, I think, kind of like crazy. So we've got some black spatters on this side. Uh, because we just have the red in the one spot, we kind of need to break that up a little. So let's do some red spatters. Oh, it's because. It's May the 4th. The force is strong with me. <laughs> All right, so we're going to do some blue spatters. If there's a section you don't want to have spattered, you can cover it with a piece of paper. You want to make sure everything's dry, but you can cover it like this so you don't get the spatter there. But I am just kind of liking how this is all over the place. I know, it's probably not the best thing I've ever done, but it was fun, and that's really all I'm going for today. So I'm kind of hitting this side with the blue and the black and leaving the red over here by itself. Um, I don't think these... Blood enough like our drip isn't as good up here as it could be so let's let's get our drip on <laughs> get your drip on get your drip on okay so we got that darker we're just gonna drip him down just it gives it a little bit more it looks a little fun I know it's completely bizarre what I'm doing but it's okay um, so I have a lot of blue over here, but not a lot of black. Now, I actually mixed my black with my red, so it's a little purple. So I'm going to get a little bit more black. Sorry, I have tons of this stuff, which is good. Since we're in a quarantine, can't go to Amazon. Okay, lying, totally go to Amazon all the time. Um, when you live in a town as small as mine, Amazon is your best friend. All right, so we're gonna do a little bit more there and there. All right, this button isn't dark enough, so we're gonna darken him up. I know it seems strange, I just spattered everywhere. I'm still gonna darken up this button. Normally I would get Jay's opinion, but I'm not going to this time, don't care. He hates spatter paintings, so we won't ask him what he thinks. I think it's really fun. I love the way this red has turned into the vent. I, it kind of looks like R2 is bleeding, which is weirdly fun to me. Be careful. Your red spatters are still wet and it will make a mess. <laughs> it's just a messy, fun um, Star Wars Day painting. I, as you can see, I got paint all over my wine glass, which is fine. It's watercolor. I think there's some in my wine glass. I'm just going to pretend the paint's non toxic and not worry about it. It's just blue wine now. So, hope you had fun. Don't forget to sign your painting. If you can find a place that's maybe dry and not covered with spatter. I like to sign my paintings, my pictures inside the paintings so people can't rip them off. Yeah, and this is the pen I don't like. All right. Well, I hope you guys had fun. Uh, if you have any suggestions, make sure you give me a comment or a like. And you can always go to, for full videos and some of the time-lapse ones, you can always go to my YouTube page, which is uh, Watercolors with Wendy. That's where I put the other tutorials. I don't know, probably where I have to put this one when Facebook takes it down. Because you know they're going to. So that's it. I'm just throwing color on now because I decided it needed something. I, I decided he needed something there, and I think he needs some blue drip here. 
just because it makes me happy. Um, and so there was red and it's totally cool. I don't mind it at all. Blend that out. There we go. 